Hey, everybody, brace yourselves. It's almost tax season. It's time to start thinking about taxes. In February, all my classes I do all over Arizona and uh, over Zoom are about taxes, tax planning. It's really taking a look and becoming as efficiently as we can. So I'm going to start our series for YouTube on tax planning. I'm going to start with kind of an introduction to what I mean by tax planning and becoming tax efficient. So it's lowering your tax burden today and tomorrow. It's not the past. We can't necessarily fix the past unless there were simply errors on your tax return, okay? We want to maximize the amount of money that stays in your pocket, that is spendable money for you in retirement, and then maximizing the amount of money that's left over for your heirs. That's the concept of tax planning. It's paying attention to the big picture. It's not putting blinders on. And how do I pay the least amount of taxes today? We have to look at the future and we have to be okay choosing to pay taxes quite often. Okay. So I'm going to run through a couple of scenarios. Uh, it's important that we get a perspective on what we mean by tax planning. So I've stripped these down. We don't have the complications of the tax returns on this. It's really just helping you see the concepts. Okay. So let's start with this. We have a single person with 17,000 Social Security, 16,000 pension, and $9,500 in mutual fund dividends that are being reinvested. She doesn't need the money right now, so the portfolio is just kicking out and reinvesting, kicking out, reinvesting, okay? So in conversations, we learn about people's individual situations, and so when I look at this situation, I see the math and 50% of half, or sorry, half of Social Security. So 50% of the full Social Security is 8,500. This is a quick down and dirty calculation that'll tell you whether you're going to owe taxes on your Social Security. So half your Social Security, all of the pension, all of the dividends, add those together for a single person if you hit $34,000. 85% of that Social Security is going to be taxable, okay? So by doing this quick, easy little calculation, and there's a little table that tells us, you know, approximately how much of the, the Social Security will be taxed based on what this number comes up with. She took home 33000 so that's adding it all up minus the, the taxation, and, and she's owing taxes on thirty nine nine, right? So social security and pension is what she was bringing in and paying her bills with. Those mutual funds were just creating taxable events and she wasn't using any of that as income in retirement. So she took home that 33,000, but she was paying taxes on 39,900, almost $40,000, okay? Now, straight calculation without deductions and all that messy stuff is $5,700 in taxes. Okay, that seems like an awful lot for somebody who uh, took home thirty-three thousand dollars. And again, we've we've stripped out all the complications of this, so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, so now we go through and we rearrange a few things. We look at the sixteen thousand pension and seventeen thousand Social Security. We're not going to call them and say, "Hey, pay her less. She wants to pay less taxes." <laughs> That's not how this works. But we do have choices on how we invest. And instead of having those dividends that she wasn't using, why not go to more of the capital gains structure? Why not go to something that's tax deferred uh, or even tax free for that matter? The reality is, is those dividends were taxable income to her and she didn't need that income. And what you're gonna see real quick here is that it was causing a lot of taxation. So if we get rid of the dividends, okay, that's the important part. We got rid of the noise from her portfolio. That's what I call noise. It was creating taxation for money she didn't get or need, okay? So we get rid of those. And now all of a sudden, no portion of her Social Security was taxable. Simply by eliminating the noise from her portfolio, all of a sudden, her, her Social Security was 0% taxable, and technically, on that 16000 pension, the straight tax calculation, she owed $1,900. Now, again, 
Uh, you add uh, the complication of the tax return, you take uh, the standard deduction from there, and she'd really actually owe no taxes. But the point that I'm making here is that it saved her $3,800 in taxes. We can complicate this as much as we want. The bottom line is this is what we talk about when we, we want to make somebody as efficient as we can with their situation. This person was happy with 30, uh, what, 33,000 worth of income, okay? So now let's do a married scenario. So in this case, they're under 70 years old. They've got 30,000 in Social Security, 12,000 in a municipal bond portfolio that they had inherited. So they're kind of waiting to till they hit maturity on those to get their money out of there because they're not worth as much as they used to be. <laughs> So this municipal bond portfolio is giving them about a thousand a month worth of interest. And it's a nice little portfolio, and and certainly tax free is always good. Twelve thousand in IRA, so they were pulling a thousand a month out of their IRA, just arbitrarily. They wanted uh, more income to enjoy their retirement, and so they decided to pull a thousand a month, and then five thousand in mutual fund dividends. Once again, being reinvested. We see this all the time, and I'm not quite sure. When you go into retirement and you're pulling from places in your portfolio, you really need to unhook the dividend reinvesting programs that go on out there. So we do the calculation on Social Security. Uh, for a married couple as opposed to a single person, you hit $44,000 and 85% of your Social Security is taxable. Please also note those tax-free municipal bonds, they still show up on a tax return. Okay, so they are going to affect taxation. They are not going to be taxed, but they are creating taxation in this case on the Social Security. Okay, so straight calculation. Again, none of the mess of the tax returns, just so we can see what's going on here. $5,400 in taxes owed, taking home $48,000. So all of that income that they had coming in, minus the taxes, they took home $48,000 worth of spendable money for them to enjoy retirement, okay? Well, let's make a couple changes here, okay? I don't want them paying all this money in taxes. I want them as efficient as possible. So I run this scenario by them. What if we get rid of the IRA withdrawals? Let's just postpone that for now. I don't want to pay those... Uh, uh, taxes on that that IRA withdrawal. So I just reduced your income by $12,000. But rather, I want to take these dividends. I want to turn them into qualified dividends and make sure we receive them as part of our income paycheck. So I took away $12,000, but I added $5,000 that we're going to start taking here. Okay. Now, let's look at the effect of this, because effectively, I just lowered their income, right? So, of course, they're going to be less taxation, but you lowered my income. That's not fair, but all of a sudden, we owed no taxes on Social Security. We owed no income taxes at all, because that Social Security was tax-free, the municipal bonds was tax-free, and if done right, qualified dividends are going to be tax-free. These people are 100% tax-free, so they save all that money they were spending on taxes. And now they have $47,000 worth of income with no taxation. So the question is to these people, if you lowered your budget by $1,500 for the entire year, effectively saving $12,000 of assets that you were pulling out, would you do it? You went tax-free, completely tax-free, just by dropping $1,500 out of your budget. And a lot of people are going to do that because how much longer do you think your money is going to last if you're saving $12,000 of your assets each year? Stop pulling that IRA money, and all of a sudden, we owe no taxes, and we're becoming extremely efficient in a case like this. Some people are going to make that choice, okay? Now, if we could you know, shift some things around and increase the dividends to make up for that 1500, it would still be tax free. And that's the path that would most likely be happening in this scenario. So again, the concept of tax planning is really just trying to be as efficient as possible with your situation and your needs. It's not about let's cut down the income and move things around and 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 
make you pinch and save every month so you don't hit the taxation lines. That's not what this is about. It's what's an enjoyable retirement, a sustainable, enjoyable retirement for you. Now let's do it as efficiently as possible. Okay, that's the important part that we understand about all this. So I've got a lot of videos coming out about tax planning. So this is part one. We'll have several parts to this series. I'll be creating these videos all through February as well. Tax planning is a very important part of financial planning. And it's important that any advisor putting together a, uh, a retirement plan for you, a portfolio for you, that they understand this taxation. It's very important when they look at the big picture to make sure you are being as efficient as possible. All right. Hope to see you next week with more, uh, more taxation. I know taxes can be a boring topic, but there's so many wonderful things that you can pay attention to in people's portfolios that are very useful and very handy. So keep watching, share the videos, subscribe if you haven't, shoot me questions. Uh, shoot me scenarios. I'll create videos on anything. I love this stuff. So uh, keep it coming and uh, appreciate the feedback. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.